libertyclassroom.com Welcome with me Thomas E. Woods Thank you, thanks guys, thank you very much Thanks, thanks. You guys are great. You guys are the salt of the earth. You're the best. You are. I want to thank uh, treasonfortruth.com for uh, their sponsorship of some of the speakers. And of course, all the vendors should all visit them. These are all good, regular people who are working on behalf of the cause. Check them all out. I haven't got that much time today to talk. Everything's, uh, you know, we have a lot of people, a lot of speakers, a lot of bands. So I got to zip right along here. I got my watch to keep me keep me on schedule. I got some, there's somebody down here who's going to give me signals as thing gets, things go bad. So it starts off with a smile, and then as the time goes on, it turns into like this, and then it turns into like, you know, so I got to keep an eye on that. But I was thinking about a month ago that it would be great for somebody to write a book called Ron Paul, The Army of One. During his tenure in Congress, Ron Paul cast the sole no vote more than any other congressman, and in fact, he cast the sole no vote more than all other congressmen put together. Now, when the vote is 260 to 157, nobody takes much notice, but when the vote is 434 to 1, People wonder, who is that one? We know who that one is. He's the man lobbyists have tried in vain to buy off. The man whose arm even presidents have been unable to twist. He's the man who refuses to stay confined to the three by five card of officially approved opinion in America. Now there are certain things you just don't say in America, and if you do say them, well you better be prepared to back off, apologize, explain yourself away. That's the behavior we have come to expect from every politician who accidentally tells the truth. But on May 15, 2007, Ron Paul got the country's attention because in a presidential debate, he said things about his government's foreign policy that Americans are not supposed to hear. And when Rudy Giuliani demanded a retraction, Not a lot of Giuliani fans here. When he demanded a retraction, he probably expected Ron to be like everybody else. Backpedal, apologize, whoops, sorry, I forgot myself, I strayed from the 3 by 5 card of approved opinion. But not only did he not do that, Dr. Paul amplified his remarks. He stepped right up and right in Rudy's face. That was one of the loneliest moments in Dr. Paul's career. He had no idea that he was going to win all the post-debate polls, that there were all these people out there who were going to rally to him. He had no idea about that, but he looked in that camera and told the truth anyway. That's what I mean about being an army of one. In a Republican debate in this very state, Dr. Paul said, we should normalize trade relations with Cuba. Yeah. In Florida, he said that. 
In a debate in South Carolina, the reddest of red states, he's stuck by his guns on the drug war. He's just going to tell the truth. Then my favorite, he spoke before an Arab American association and they asked, Dr. Paul, did you write a special speech for our group? And he said, no, I don't write special speeches for different groups. I give the same speech everywhere about individual liberty. things. A guy you never heard of, Terry Holt, who worked on George W. Bush's presidential campaigns, said that Ron Paul, as he recalled, could not be influenced the way the other congressman could. He said this, the thing about Ron Paul is, what does he want that we have? He's never been someone who was interested in being co-opted or in trading and dealing. He would tell us how he was voting, and that was that. There was nothing he wanted that we could offer him in exchange for his vote. Yeah! As an army of one, he has stood up to the conventional wisdom and been right every time. In 2001, on the House floor, he said the Federal Reserve gave us the boom-bust cycle with the stock market bubble, and now it's inflating a real estate bubble, and that's going to go bust, just like all the others. This is a guy who can tell the future, for heaven's sake. <laughs> and through his, great, through his great and noble example as the army of one, he's brought out millions of reinforcements, and all of you are exhibit A of what he's done. Now for the ugliness. I'm sorry we were having a wonderful event, but I do have to mention Mitt Romney for a minute. What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get if you vote for Mitt Romney? Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of No, let me give the answer. <laughs> Alright, you're gonna get a lot more neocon bellicosity in foreign policy, fueled, fueled by propaganda that would insult a fourth grader. You're going to get a guy who tells you that if we implemented Ron Paul's budget plan that wants to cut a trillion bucks, that would cause a depression. Well, you know what? That's exactly the same view that the New York Times and Paul Krugman have, and that's what Mitt Romney is saying. There's your big choice. And then, but don't forget, he's got the true, the true conservative Paul Ryan. For his yep. My gosh, what a draconian budget plan he has that finally balances in the year 2040. <laughs> then he voted for Medicare Part D, the NDAA, and for TARP, which is the worst domestic policy atrocity in all of U.S. history. And he gave all the phony baloney arguments for it. And now, notice what happens. The official left and the official right now play the game. The left portrays him as an extremist. And, the, and the, the fake right says, oh, he's a wonderful conservative. And each of them, they're just trying to raise money. The left raises money by making people think, oh my gosh, Paul Ryan's going to abolish everything. And the right raises money by saying, he is, look at what he's, all these wonderful things. He's just another one of these phonies like all the rest, as anybody with a brain can see. <laughs> The Republican Party has been like Lucy with the football. And all these suckers every year are Charlie Brown. A vote for Mitt Romney is a vote for the status quo, and anyone who thinks otherwise is absolutely delusional. Romney is, Romney is the anti-Ron Paul on foreign policy, on the Fed, on the budget, on civil liberties, what's left? And un unlike Ron, he is the consummate politician. Every word is carefully weighed in light of focus group results. In fact, I've sometimes said that the guy is so robotic that it would not surprise me if we opened his head up, we would find circuitry and wiring in there. <laughs> Dr. Paul will never endorse such a reprehensible human being.
Now, we've heard a lot about messaging. Well, what's the message of this particular event? I can only speak for this event. But our message, the way I see it, is that if you even want to imply that we are involved in some kind of common cause with a monster like Mitt Romney, then you have missed the whole point of the Ron Paul revolution. Now, I love Dr. Paul. I would do anything he asked of me. And I look back with a, a, a sadness filled with, at, at the same time, coupled with good memories of things that I've been privileged to do uh, with and for him, uh, speaking at many events as sort of his opening speaker. And boy, I get to speak to huge audiences when that happens. <laughs> uh, but testifying before Congress on auditing the Fed and speaking at uh, his, his great barbecue event with thousands of people come to wish him a happy birthday and working on projects with him. These are memories that I will cherish forever. But the question that so many of us are asking, though, is what do we do now? What now? What should our next step be? And why isn't Ron Paul telling me what to do? The answer is that only you can know what you are called to do. Only you can know your own strengths. Only you can know exactly where you fit in to this historic struggle. If you're a writer, then write. If you want to become a writer, start practicing. If you have some talent, use it. If you can do audio video work for a Liberty Group, do it. If you're a graphic designer or an animator or a humorist, use those talents. And there are plenty of worthy organizations you can join that do great work. The 10th Amendment Center, promoting state nullification. I'm sure the Florida chapter could use some help, headed by the great Andrew Nappy. Join Oath Keepers, too. They're out there doing good work for us. There's my old home, the Ludwig von Mises Institute, educating people around the world. And then for sites to visit, well, for news and fellowship, dailypaul.com. And don't forget the Ron Paul forums, too. But also, of course, lewrockwell.com, where Ron Paul And avoid the propaganda by looking at antiwar.com. And incidentally, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be altogether unhappy if you paid me a visit at TomWoods.com. <laughs> whatever you do, whatever you do, remember the example of Dr. Paul. In a world of cowards, stick to your principles. In a sea of lies, tell the truth. Into the darkness, shine a light. Do those things. Be that person. That is what Ron Paul wants from you. Now, the earliest appearance of the word liberty in writing comes down to us from ancient Sumer in Mesopotamia in 3000 BC. So the land between the rivers, Sumer. We find it in that civilization's cuneiform script. So you and I, that means, are engaged in a struggle that has been going on long before we were born and will persist long after we're dead, the struggle between liberty and power. And so be courageous and studious and persistent. Remember that the one person on this earth you have full power to improve is yourself. Learn. Learn and teach whenever and wherever you can. Be your own army of one, and then you will be carrying on the Ron Paul legacy. Yeah.